Oh, welcome, welcome to a very special edition of the Lead Talk. Today, I am welcoming you to a special edition because we have a special guest today. And in addition to the special guest, we have the co-founder, uh, myself, Dr. Gerard Amandu, and uh, uh, Coach Shilpa Joshi, uh, sharing the platform with you with one and only um, special guest, Dev Sethi. Dev Sethi is the founder and the CEO of Wealth On Demand, Wealth On Command. And it's a very great privilege to have him today because he's going to share with us important information about his career revival journey, his career transformation journey. Just before we go on, I would like to welcome Dev Sethi. Hello, uh, glad to be here, Gerald and Shilpa. Thanks a lot. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for joining us. Beautiful. So I would like to set the stage by letting you know in more detail who Dev Sethi is. Now, Dev Sethi is recognized globally as the sales champion of the year 2019 across 150 countries. And he works with clients from around the world. And what he does uniquely is he maximizes their growth and impact online. And this has resulted in great sales for them. Now, one of the key things with Dave Sethi is we, look, we know him as a visionary entrepreneur, a multi-award winning business growth strategist who has generated over $6 million for his clients. And especially during the time of the pandemic, Dev Sethi is on a mission to transform at least 10 million people globally and give them financial self-independence so that they can command the lifestyle they always have dreamed of for themselves and the families and importantly for their communities. With a background in IT software development, Dev has successfully transitioned from being an employee to now being a world-renowned entrepreneur. And this is precisely where the Wealth on Command global community comes in. And so today we have this great opportunity to have Dev with us. And um, having been born in Thailand, growing up in India, as we speak now, Dev is joining us from Sydney and Australia. And we are so privileged to have him. But before I get Dev on, on, the, on the seat, so to say, I want to start with something that is very special. And I, I like from one of the quotes Dev always says. He says, if something scares you and, and, and excites you at the same time, just do it, right? So that should be our opening remarks as Dev joins us. So, so with that, I would like to hand over to my colleague, my co-founder, um, Coach Shilpa, to take it away. Okay, okay. Welcome, welcome all listeners, our audience and the viewers of Lead Talk Podcast and Lead Talk TV. And we are so glad to have our first interview with none other than Dave Sethi, the great person who is a mentor, who is a coach and turned from employee to million dollar entrepreneur. Yes. So that's why focus of this episode is going to be about the transformative career revival with Dave Sethi. If you stick till the end, Dave will share some of the projects he's working on, how you can associate with him. And he has created a special gift to share with you. And the gift is seven secrets of persuasive phases to get more client and it can help you at every stage of your professional journey. So welcome once again, Dev. And let me ask you the first question, which is tell us about your career journey in brief, how it started and where you got in the career. Okay, so great to be here once again. And my career started uh, 15 years ago in Australia. Okay, so I, I live in Australia now and I'm from an IT background. 
when I came to Australia 15 years ago, I came with only three three thousand dollars in my pocket. Not even mine. I had borrowed that money, and um, I was an IT programmer. Speaks really well with a with a computer. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what it is, you know. And through through that journey, 15 years in corporate life, mm -hmm. is I always had a dream that I wanted to give back to my family. Yes. So yes. I stayed focused, and I said, "Look, I'm just going to do the best I can in my job." Uh, from an IT programmer, became a team lead, started mm -hmm. managing uh, people, uh, went mm -hmm. up to uh, strategy level. So I kept growing and growing. And along this journey, I kept giving back to my family as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, one fine day, I realized that it was it was not enough. I needed to give more back. And that's mm -hmm. when I made the, the jump from on, uh, employee to entrepreneur. But uh, wow. that's my journey in... Um, wow. In <laughs> that's so exciting journey. Though you summarized it in two minutes, I know it has taken a decade for you to do that great work and you have been consistently contributing to society, community and your mentees. Let me yeah. get to the second question, which is what exactly helped you to achieve the greater success during your corporate career before you even decided to transition out? Mm. So I think that's a, a brilliant question. Is I remember the time when I came to Australia 15 years ago, didn't have much, right? All I had was a dream. I really had a dream. That dream mm -hmm. is to be independent, you know, because I was still very dependent on my family uh, before I came. When I came to Australia, I said, I want to be independent. That's number one. Number yeah. two is my, my family had sacrificed a lot for me, my education, my growth, and now it's time to give back. So I came with that dream that I will give back one day. And because of that dream, I just focused. I just focused in being the best at my job, right? Yes. And that kept me going. So I would actually say the thing that made me excel in my job, kept growing in my career from a programmer to a team lead to a manager to, you know, uh, really looking after strategy and, and, you know, emerging technologies it was the focus, the dream, the focus to wow. be really Beautiful. great at what I do and give back. And that's wow. what kept me going. Beautiful. Wow, because focus is very important. And as you strive continuously for excellence, that kept you moving ahead. And you also said you were a team leader. So definitely we can look forward for next exciting episode on leadership journey as well. And okay. before we get that I have another question which is embedded in your previous journey is that you transitioned from being an employee to entrepreneur what specifically triggered your transition from being employed to being self-employed because you were doing extremely well in your career you became a team leader and I think you were leading a team at a national level as well okay so when like I said when I had come to Australia in the year 2006 that's about you know 15 years ago Within a year, I said, ah, the job is not for me. I want to transition out. Like I, I always wanted to have my own business. I always wanted to do uh, do something which is bigger than, you know, bigger mm -hmm. than what it is. I yes. always yes. felt that I, I had a lot more potential. Yes. And this was about in 2007. And I actually had a, ch a chat with my dad. I'm like, hey, you know. I don't know why what I'm doing in a job. I want to quit my job, start my own business. Mm -hmm. And at that point of time, my dad said, look, it's still very early on. Why didn't you get some more skills? You know, because to to, wow. to, to get into a job, mm -hmm. to get into a business, you need lots of skills, yeah. right? So I said, okay, let me stay around for a while. And then 2008 came and it was the global financial crisis. And I was yes. like, oh my God, thank you. I did not actually quit my job that time because mm -hmm. I would have been in a really deep, dark uh, place. Yes. But despite that global financial crisis, because I had a dream, I kept growing. I kept growing in my job, just focused on getting the skills. Yes. But mm -hmm. then after that, I was like, you know what? It's when it came to a lot, when it came to some point of time, I'm like, dream of giving back to my family. I want to give more. You know, mm -hmm. it became like yeah. I hit a ceiling and I got very comfortable in my job now because I was growing. I had everything I wanted. But what's next now? I'm not mm -hmm. just going to be in a job here. I wanted much more. Mm -hmm. But I got comfortable. Then I got married. I had kids as well. But the really the transition that got me out from my job into the entrepreneur world was really an incident that happened. Um, this was in May 2018. Mm -hmm. So my dad was with me in in Australia. And it was a, it was a Thursday. Uh, and he's from Thailand. So he was with me on Thursday. He flew back to Thailand on Friday. 
and Saturday he entered ICU. Oh. Right. Oh. So his heart rate went from 80 to 190. And in that moment, I was like, what just happened? There is, and all these memories of my dream of giving back to my mom, my dad, my family, all just came back. And I was like, I've not done, I've, I've got so much more to do. Mm -hmm. And so I flew back to, flew back to Thailand the very next day. And in the ICU room, I still remember very clearly. And I was just hoping and praying that I get a second chance. You know, I hope my dad survives. And if I get the second chance, I'll go full in and I'll do whatever it takes. You know, my, my prayers were answered. My dad's healthy. He's alive. But when I came back to Australia, it was May 2018. Mm. I came back mm -hmm. to Australia in June 2018. And in mm. that point of time, there was a shift in my perspective. I'm like, this is it. This is the moment. If I don't do anything now, I will never do it. And not everybody gets a second chance, right? Yeah. So I took that opportunity and I made a decision that I'm going to do whatever it takes to transition out of my job. So I had a chat with my wife, uh, very supportive. And I said, give me 12 months. Because mm -hmm. I'm not just going to quit. I needed to learn a skill. Because yes. what I realized is when you start a business, business is not easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you just take a jump immediately, it's not easy. We need to prepare ourselves with a skill. And the number one skill in business is sales. Nothing yeah. happens in business until a sale is made. Yes. So I realized that. So I, while I was in my job, right, 40 hours working my job on the yeah. side, I was, I learned sales. I took a lot of sales calls. I ended up working for 18 months straight, 40 hours in my job and 50 hours on the side taking sales calls, right? So I worked 90 hours for a, Wow. For full 18 months. Wow. And that gave me the confidence that, you know what? I have what it takes now. I've learned sales. And then I saved some money on the side as well in this process. And then I transition now. So I spoke to my wife. I'm like, hey, I think we are ready now. We've got some savings. I've got some skills as well. I'm ready to take the plunge. And that's what, uh, what triggered me. That's what kept me going. And that's how I transitioned into my, into my business in Jan. Uh, 2020. Wow, what wow. a beautiful journey. Let me give an yeah, uh, that, that really clap deserved. for you. A clap for yes, you. Yeah. Thank you. absolutely, yeah. Dev. And what you said is that I completely resonate with that. Not that everybody gets a second chance. And yeah. there is always something happens because we get comfortable in the job we do, in the corporate lives, the salary is mm -hmm. coming in. And that comfort can keep us stuck for a long time. But I'm, I'm so happy that you had a specific trigger which motivated you. But you didn't stop at the trigger. You took the actions and you took your family into confidence while going on this journey. So I want to ask you because our viewers and our listeners who are on the similar journey or some people who are sitting on the fence can also understand that what are the specific steps you took to start your transition journey from being an employed to entrepreneur? Can you give us a few specific steps for our listeners? Sure. So before you, before you sort of transition out of your job into your business, yes. I think setting up the foundation is real key. And mm -hmm. I think the foundation actually, and I'm very, very grateful for me being in the job because a lot of skills that I learn in my job today is what I'm applying in business. Yes. So think of think of a job as not just a place where you're just going to do a job. Think of think of job. The number one is think of the job as a place where you're learning multiple skills. Right. Yes. So key key skills are like basic basic communication skills right you yes. are in a you are in a job basic communication skills how to how to talk to your peers how to talk to your managers right these are basic communication skills right how mm -hmm. do you actually engage in a meeting how do you sell yourself in in the job you know if they ask you present these are all basic skills mm. i would say when you're in a job focus on i want to learn these skills Right. Yes. That would be the number one. The, the first thing I, I sort of said, this is the foundation. The second part about that second part is so in a job, what happens is when there are certain opportunities that open up, mm -hmm. you know, reach out for them, volunteer for it, you know, raise your hand, says, I want to do this. I want to mm -hmm. do that. What this does is it creates this uh, this feeling within you is to to go out of your comfort zone. Yes. Right? You're still in a job, but you're actually volunteering in different departments. Mm -hmm. You're actually helping other teams. 
what this does is like i said number two it, it helps you in a safe environment how to go out of your comfort zone mm. to try something new that you've yeah. never done before so yes. that's what i would say number two right and number three is this is a uh, key important is what happens in a job is when you say you'll do something just mm -hmm. hold yourself accountable and yes. just do it no matter what yeah so if you can uh, you can do this third thing you will actually find that self motivation because mm -hmm. once you transition into a business mm -hmm. there's nobody telling you hey get up today in the morning go do your work nobody is doing right there's no yeah. boss coming and telling you hey you didn't appear in the job you yes. need that self motivation yes. so that that third part in a job when you hold yourself accountable you will have this integrity Yes. So that's what kept me going when I was actually in June 2018. I said, this is what I'm going to do. I, I did say 12 months to my wife, but it took 18 months. And that's okay. But I kept going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this thing that keeps you going will create this resilience in you, will create this yeah. grit in you mm -hmm. that will yeah. keep letting you go. And if you still want to be in a job, you will grow. You will grow. I grew. I grew a lot in my career. And when I was ready, I made the move. But wow. I had these three things, you know. Beautiful. Wow. Which I just that is so beautiful because what you said is like, uh, let me summarize, like first is to get maximum skills and focus on them while you are at a job because you can use all that when you uh, after you transition. So focus on the skills you are learning while on the job. Also keep breaking your comfort level every time because you're actually in a safe space and when you can venture out. And the third one is the biggest thing which brings transformation is not just passion and not just that desire, but holding yourself accountable to do what you say you will do. And that builds a strong integrity and resilience within you. So thank you so much. Uh, these are the very important lessons I personally used and in my career revival journey as well. So, uh, Dave, what are the key lessons you learned along this transition journey? If you have to tell us the top three key lessons. Mm -hmm. So, would, would, would it be in, in the job or would it be in the entrepreneurial? In the transition which, journey, like going okay. from taking that call and making that journey. What are the key lessons you learned? Look, the, the first lesson is it's not going to be easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not going to be easy, but it's absolutely 100% possible. Yeah. Okay. If if it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. Yeah. So the key here is, although it's not easy, but if you have that deep desire, that dream, and you really want it, mm -hmm. yes. it will actually happen. Yes. Right. So so the first thing is, because business world, there are so many uncertainties. There are so many unknown. Right. Yes. When you're going through this transition and you can go through this feeling of ups and downs and like, oh, it's not easy. It's so hard. It is actually preparing you for when you're in the business world. Mm. Yes. Yeah? This is actually preparing you. So that would be my first lesson, right? It's, it's not easy, but it's 100% possible if you yeah. keep your mind focused. That's number yes. one. Number two here is it is the support of your family. So for me, for example, I actually had a chat with my wife right yeah so yeah. uh a lot of times there's a fear there's actually a lot of fear that you know hey i've job I've, i'm getting money it's very stable you know but if i quit my job the money is not no longer there right there's a fear that even i had this fear so mm. i also had a chat with my with my wife and uh, i said look give us 12 months so it's not a sudden uh, say tomorrow i'm going to quit but let's plan it out right yes. so we we are not desperate. We save money. We learn the skills. And at yes. the same time, you when, when I've spoken to my wife, I get this support. The second lesson that I want to share here is the support from your spouse, whether it's your, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your mom, dad. Bring them on the journey that this is what you want to do. Ask them for that time. Give them like, hey, in 12 months, this is what I'm going to do. And bring them along the journey. Because the fact here is this, right? You will only be as successful as your spouse allows you to be. <laughs> so, you know, That's so it's, important. It's, it's, yeah, yes. so it is very important to, to bring them on the journey. Yes. Whether yes. it's your spouse or your, or your parents as well. A lot of people will listen to this. They might not have a spouse, but they have a, a parent, either a mom or a yes. dad. Yes. Bring them on the journey. Share mm -hmm. them your dream. Ask for them. It's not just one day. It's like 12 months and you work with it. And as you grow, 
you show them your progress so that when mm. you show them your progress, your job is still working fine. You're moving towards your dream. They will get a confidence that, hey, you are actually going through your dream. Yes. And what I learned, uh, and this is a very big part. I want to talk a little bit more about this second part, sure. uh, support from your family. Mm. It's not that they don't support you when they mm -hmm. tell you, hey, don't go become business, stay in a job. It's not that. It's just that they are very scared that mm -hmm. what if you fail? Yes. You know, so they're trying to protect you, right? To say, hey, don't fail. But the, the key thing is, if you don't show them that you can do it and you bring them on the journey, they will always be pulling you back out of love, not yes. out of hatred. Your family loves you. But it is your role to bring your family on the journey to show them that, hey, this is actually possible. I can actually do it. So that's the second part. Bring your uh, spouse on the journey. And wow. the third thing, the third thing what I learned, the biggest lesson is mm -hmm. a lot of times when when we learn something and we we we, we keep it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, what I started doing, and you can see uh, I, I was still in a job when I was doing this, is I just started a YouTube channel and I just kept sharing what I was learning. Mm. Because when I was sharing, uh, when I learn something, before I share it out, there's a translation that goes in the mind, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. in, in the way that I understand it. When I started sharing, the knowledge that I was learning, it was anchoring in my mind. It was anchoring in my body. And when I started sharing, mm -hmm. it became a reality. I'm like, hey, this is what I'm sharing. I now need to live it, breathe it, and this needs to become me. Yes. So when I started my YouTube channel in uh, April 2019, I mm -hmm. actually started by saying, hey, follow me on this journey. Uh, I'm I'm going to transition out of my job. Uh, I'm an immigrant. If you two are an immigrant and you're here and you want to know how to do it, uh, build a business, give back to your family, follow me. I'll just share everything. And that's how I started my journey. Mm -hmm. And I kept sharing. And then this opened up my fears. And whatever mm -hmm. I was feeling inside... I was just sharing on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And this, when I started sharing, I started training my mind that, hey, it's actually very okay. A lot it's of possible. people may want yeah. to hear this message. And that's allowed me to sort of control my fear and kept going by actually sharing. it. So those are the three key lessons I would actually say. Thank you. Thank you so much. These are the top three key lessons for us as well, because there are so many people and we are also moving forward in our own transitions because there is always the next level, as we say in this episode. So thank you so much. And the lessons are so deep and useful to anybody taking any transition in their life at any point in time. So thank you for sharing that day. Over to you, Gerald. What questions you have in mind for our guest? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh Dev Sethi, thank you for those beautiful answers. Uh, I'm, I'm taking notes and I'm sure our audience um, will be enjoying this a lot. One of the things you mentioned is, I like the fact that you're very family oriented. You talk about freedom in a way, although you didn't use the word freedom. I kind of sense that from your words. Um, you talked about creating freedom for self and for the family and those people you want to give back to. Why is freedom important to you look i think uh humans by default um they want to do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it in in the way they want to do it you know it's freedom is pretty much like it's it's a choice that someone has mm -hmm. to do whatever they want to do so i think if you study um like if you look at all the human evolution, mm -hmm. you know, there's been wars fought, there's been people, you know, fighting for, for whatever. It's it's always been about that freedom. Yes. So it's in our DNA where if you control someone too much, they're going to feel like, hey, this is too much. We want to be free, okay. you know. So I think that whole aspect of giving the ability to oneself to be able to do what they want, when they want, mm -hmm. however they want, with whom they want, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, that's that's actually freedom in, in that aspect. So I, I also felt the same mm -hmm. is when I came to Australia, I didn't come by, uh, you know, it's I came here to to give back to my family. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and I always had that dream that, hey, I want to come back and make myself independent so I can give as much back. And mm -hmm. that to me is is freedom because I can then do whatever I want to do. Okay. I spend a lot of time with my wife. I spend a lot of time with my kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think 
would you like to spend as much time as you want to do the things you like yeah <laughs> absolutely i i love that i i love that and that takes me to something that most successful people um as they get freedom they also bring the elements of significance in their own lives and in the lives of the people important to them just like you're mentioning this kind of brings to me the idea of significance so now that you transitioned successfully uh, what are you doing now to get to that next level of significance so that you can even contribute as abundant as possible for your family and other loved ones okay that's a that's a really nice deep question right yes. so the if you take a bit of a step back so when you asked me just now about freedom and now mm. you're asking about significance i i term all this under the banner of wealth mm -hmm. Mm. right so wealth is beyond just money right wealth yes. is actually yes. giving back to others wealth is financial stability wealth is mm -hmm. spiritual health mental health you know time mm -hmm. with family freedom of choice significant success all this if you have the time to do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do that's really wealth yeah and if you can if you can control this journey mm -hmm. you can actually command the wealth you want so yes. when i actually understood this i sort of came up with this whole uh, brand and movement that i want to share with people is what i call wealth on command command yes and when i speak to a lot of people yes people love helping others okay mm -hmm. they say i want to make a massive impact in this world i want to help people but what they're forgetting is one thing and this is uh, maybe a bit too direct here but i think people need to hear this yeah. mm -hmm. is before you can it. make an before you make an impact in the world before you can actually have significance in this world mm -hmm. you got to look after yourself first yes right so that when you look after yourself it's really that financial stability that you have for yourself you cannot help others if you don't help yourself first true so true. true and this is what a lot of times and i've come across people saying hey i want to make an impact and it's absolutely great that's a very noble cause and i admire you for that mm -hmm. but you cannot make an impact to someone else in a positive way in the best way from an abundant mindset mm -hmm. if internally you're feeling desperate if internally you're feeling lack of something Mm. and generally people feel lack of either in terms of i don't have enough health i don't have enough money i don't have enough you know but it really boils down to the basic need if i have you don't need a lot of money to live right yes. some people need just enough money to have food have rent uh, have a shelter but that's financial stability once you get that level of stability then the next level is okay now let me actually help others Mm. and the way the way i look at it to help others the best way the fastest way is build a business so that you can reach more people and when you mm. reach more people and they get success that's when you feel that you made a significant impact beautiful, so my beautiful. journey is actually the same the the whole wealth on command aspect is number one let's make income right okay. financial <laughs> stability that's number one number two is let's grow your influence through mm -hmm. a, creating a successful business mm -hmm. and when you do that you will actually make an impact and that's global significance so income influence impact impact that's oh, how beautiful. you can actually make an significance oh beautiful beautiful i i like those three key elements and um, one of the key things in my own journey and in my co-founder's journey we've all had the element of mentorship taking us to the next level who would you say is the most influential mentor in your life especially the one so, who helped you to transition and to become successful as we are today okay so i've i'll take a step back when i came to australia right so i've always had this like since childhood mm. uh, my dad and mom has always said hey you know i've always followed them what they do right so i've got yeah. this mm -hmm. concept in mind is if i want to do something i'll just see someone who's been there done that right yes. so i would probably say in my life as i've grown up i've i've looked at my parents my dad and mom they've been in business yes. they've been sort of my my mentor in a way without you know like you absorb by being in that yes. surrounding okay yes. but when i came to australia in uh, 2006 subconsciously i had this in mind that you know i need to find someone that mm -hmm. would help me grow so as soon as i got a job internally in the company i looked at someone much senior than me 
So this yeah. person I found who was like two, three ranks above me, I mm -hmm. approached him and I said, hey, will you mentor me? You know, so he said, yes, that was within three weeks of me getting a job. I found this person. Yes. And for seven years, when I was in that first company for seven years, I caught up with my mentor every single month, once a month for seven years. Wow. And wow. because of that, because of that, I wow, grew and I great. grew really fast. Right. So I would probably, I would say that uh, the, the, mm -hmm. even if you're in a job, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. you need a mentor to grow. You find someone who's two, three ranks above you or someone who's been there, done that, reach out to them and, and they will take you. So I was the only person in the entire company. The company is about 130 years old. Mm -hmm. but I was the only person who got promoted two times in one calendar year. Oh, because I had a mentor. Wow. Right. When I transitioned to my second job in Australia, so I've been 15 years in a corporate, seven mm -hmm. years, seven and a half in one company, seven and a half in the other. Mm -hmm. As soon as I went to the other company as well, I found another mentor. I did the same thing. I said, let me find someone who is much above me. So I found like three, four levels above me. And I grew, I grew, I grew mm -hmm. the, the road. Beautiful. And when I transitioned out of my, of my job, I was like, okay, now it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. want to create, a, who's going to help me uh, build my business? So I found my mentor who taught me sales and then business as well. His name is Dan Locke. You guys know him. Yes. And yes. Uh, that's how I found my mentor. And in business, yes, I went through many, 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 many coaches, many, many mentors. You name it. I've learned from all. Yes. But when you learn from all, it's not that. It's you're mm -hmm. finding the right person where you connect with. Yes. And sometimes you don't find the right person in one shot. That's why mm. when you go through many, many programs, many coaching sessions, many mentors, mm. you are looking for the person that resonates with you. Yeah. Yeah. After so going through fifth, after going through 15, 20 people, mm -hmm. I found two people that really, really resonated with me, right? One of them was Dan Locke. And I yes. went deep. I went real deep. And the yes. second one, uh, his name is Joel Bauer, right? Okay. So with these two, I went deep. I went real deep. And and now, now I'm just growing in my business because I have found the right person. Mm. Exactly. So to answer your question is, Sometimes a mentor doesn't just come like that. You got to go looking for it. Okay. And when you go looking for it, your context expands. And then you, you like, oh, this is the mentor. And then you resonate with one another. Copy. Right. So I that's how that. I found my mentors as well. And uh, those are the mentors that really influenced my journey. Yeah, I would. I, I love those, those. Those are beautiful answers. I, I would not leave you before saying what are the three main lessons you learned from this because you, you went through many people right so for somebody listening to us right now what are the three key points about mentorship would you want to yep. say okay yeah so the 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 thing about mentorship is really there's actually uh there's three things you want to look in a mentor right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. number one is so a mentor is very different than a coach. A mentor yeah. is someone who's been there, done that. I would encourage all of you to find someone who's been there, done that, right? Yeah. So these are the three things that you look at. Number mm -hmm. one is the person who you take as your mentor, do they have the results that you want? Yes. Yeah. If they have the results that you want, great. That's the first point. The second point is, do they have the capability to mm -hmm. mentor you. So some people, they have a results, right? They have results, but they don't have the capability to mentor. So they're not yes. the right mentor. Yes. Right? And then the third one is, they, they have the results. They have the capability. The third one is, do they want to mentor you? <laughs> yes. Yeah? You got to find that. Yes. And and the key part here is, the third part is, it, it's not that... Uh, if you go to them and say, mentor me, they'll say, no, it's the third part really means here is, do you relate with them? Yeah. Mm. You know, there can be people who have got the results. They can, they have the capability, but do they want to mentor you? Or in other words, do you relate with them? Yeah. Good you fit, know? right? So if, yeah. you don't if you don't yeah. relate with someone, there's all great mentors out there. Okay. But the key, th the third part is if you find someone that, Hey, this person really, speaks the way I want to listen. This person understands me. This person can break down the steps for me. This person is patient with me. Yeah. This person, 
that's that 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 third part yes. being able to relate will actually make you feel that hey this mentor is meant for me and this mentor wants to mentor me so those are the three things i would probably say if you're looking beautiful. for a great mentor a beautiful that's am- really amazing because yes. uh, people understand the importance of mentorship dev but sometimes we keep searching for who is my mentor who is my mentor from whom we can learn and it's a process it's not just one step answer to anything and we'll have to look for but finally these three things would help us choose the best mentor because the mentor has impact on us and it can actually accelerate our journey mentor gives us speed as she food and log gives us every single time so yes we also express our gratitude to him here because you are also here yeah. and my next question to you is they now you have come from your corporate journey to this great journey of being an entrepreneur not only entrepreneur a million dollar entrepreneur yes. so what does that wild success looks like to you now so uh it puts a smile on my face definitely and uh it's putting a smile on your face as well yeah. so look it's it's really it's really that feeling of getting success for yourself is i think the first step you know mm-hmm. uh, everybody uh wants success that stability for themselves their family mm-hmm. you know that i think would be the number one the second thing is is really when you can actually help someone get their results get mm-hmm. their success oh that takes it to the next level that mm-hmm. really takes it to the next level you know and um, there was an incident in uh, in 2021 someone approached me and asked me to sort of just approach me and say can you help me win the sales champion and i helped her mm-hmm. and she won it and that just brought tears to my eyes the tears <laughs> of joy of course yeah. and that's when i found that this feeling of giving someone the success that they they want Mm-hmm. takes your fulfillment to the next level and and that's what really puts a very deep fulfillment uh smile and inner joy uh to me so i i'd i'd say that and when you keep doing more and more of that then uh it becomes more of you know what let me just start helping more let me just yes. start helping more yeah but the 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 thing that i want to really stress here is you will not get to that level of real fulfillment if you're not looking after yourself first mm. yeah yeah so the the real aspect here is look after yourself first mm. so when i yeah. say wealth on command yes wealth is money as well look after yourself by having at least uh, whatever you need you need maybe 1k 10k 5k 50k whatever have that stability so you don't feel desperate yes. yeah and when you don't feel desperate the energy that you help someone with will be full mm-hmm. you know you will you will go full out you will help them succeed you will help them grow and you will grow together so that's uh, that's really what i want to actually share wow that's really? so wonderful yes, and I i've always learned so much from you uh, being being part of your journey also you you have coached directly also to me on many occasions and in many aspects and now i know you are here to create a greater impact in people's life so i want to reveal one secret here and can i ask you to share us more about your upcoming book and your program yep sure so look i i do actually have a a mentorship here which i call it the wealth on command where yeah. i show people how to build a build an impactful business yes. so they can create that financial independence and live the life they want you know so do whatever they want however they want so that's my wealth on command uh, journey and i do have my book coming up which is called <laughs> wealth on command as well uh, wow. i can show it to you if you want to have yeah, a look at please, it yes please please and <laughs> reveal the look we have not seen it as yet <laughs> so here here's the book wow. the wealth on um, command that's right? good so it is Beautiful. it is coming out it is coming out uh the 1st of feb uh, 2023 so yeah. that's book and it's available uh as a as a pre order as well people can do it but it'll be mm-hmm. available on amazon mm-hmm. uh shortly as well so that's the book wealth on command thank beautiful. you for revealing beautiful. the look on our show for yes, the first it's time you did so beautiful beautiful <laughs> this is a great thank opportunity so yes. yeah and please share a link with us for pre order so that mm-hmm. we can share with our audience and the viewers here as well dev and sure, our best sure. wishes for the book Now yes. the time for rapid fire some quick quiz are you ready for that okay great uh, rapid, <laughs> let me let me have a glass of water first yeah 
<laughs> okay, okay, great. Sure. Okay. So, the most embarrassing moment for you? Oh, the most embarrassing moment for me. You know, when I was in school, I think uh, uh, we we were on stage and because um, I had long hair, so I had uh -huh. to I had to wear a skirt and a frock and actually take part <laughs> as a as a as a female character on stage. So okay. I still remember that was class five. Yeah, so I don't know wow, I that. <laughs> that's beautiful, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Okay, one thing you loved about your corporate career. Oh, I, oh, the 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 best part of my corporate career is the different type of people that I met. Mm -hmm. You know, even till today, the connections that I built in the uh, in my corporate is actually helping me in my business as well. So it is it is the connections with people I maintain over a long period of time. I think that was a that was the most beautiful part of wonderful. My, mm -hmm. And what are your top three career success values, which is must for you in your career? So number one is, I think it starts with uh, succeeding together. Like if you and I are working together, if you succeed, yeah. I succeed. If I succeed, you succeed. So that's that's really, really number one, succeed together, right? Mm -hmm. And it would also be number two is when we are succeeding, we take full responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if, if I agree that we, you will, I will help you, you will help me. Let's take full responsibility for it, right? Yeah. And then in this relationship, what we do, we sort of end with, you know, let's have a significant impact on both of us. Yes. yes. Right. If you if you feel that you want to get to a particular goal, if I take full responsibility and we hit that goal, we we start the relationship with success mm -hmm. and we sort of uh, complete the relationship with a significant impact. Yes. Wow! Wow! What is that one thing you just cannot tolerate, Dave? <laughs> There's actually uh, the, so all my secrets are coming out here, right? <laughs> so one one thing that so look, I'm. When I'm a bit of a go, go, go person, okay, and I've, yeah. I've learned that, you know, uh, go, go, go may not always be the best thing. But for what I what I really don't appreciate or it takes a lot of energy out from me, if let's put it that way, is, mm -hmm. is when there's a lot of like uh, slow down. Let's slow down. Let's mm -hmm. think. Let's process. Then let's take mm -hmm. our own sweet time. I think that can get into this overthinking mode. And yeah. It's it's sort of uh, the momentum that I've got, it slows down. So that takes a lot of energy from me. But I've also realized that sometimes we need to slow down to move faster. Yes. Yeah. So, But I, it still takes a lot of energy from my part. But I think that is still an important aspect that I need to have the right people around me to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. perfect. <laughs> what are your top three achievements? So my top uh, in my in my corporate, would you say yeah, that? Yeah, overall, overall in right. your overall, life. I, I think the 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 one one thing I really really loved is I came to Australia thinking that I would actually give back to my family. I came in two thousand six. In two thousand eight, mm -hmm. I bought my parents a car, right? You know, so it was a Honda, wow. I bought, mm -hmm. and I, I I paid for it completely. I said it when I was a child, I'll buy them a car. So I think that was the uh, they didn't need it, but I I just bought it because I said I would do it. And now mm -hmm. until today, I feel that was a very very big. Uh, fulfillment I, you know, that I, 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 I was able to buy that for them right so that was the first thing the second second achievement was when I was able to sort of really uh, get that support of my my wife you know on helping me transition out of my job mm. I think that was a very key moment in my life that that support that I felt mm -hmm. I think that is so powerful yeah you know so, so that was my second second achievement, and uh, I think that the third achievement here would be in my business. Mm -hmm. I've actually been able to to sort of sustain it and grow it. It's it's my third year now in, mm -hmm. in business, and we're growing strong. And uh, I've got clients from eighteen different countries. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a that's a good success for me. And mm -hmm. uh, it's all going to come out in the book anyway, all yes. the stories. Yes. But that, that would be my 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 top three things that I would actually say is, is success. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. One thing you wish you knew, Dave, when you were at 20. One thing I wish I knew when I was 20. I think the, the aspects of uh, really the business entrepreneurs, uh, the skills that I learned in my entrepreneur now, if I knew mm. it a lot earlier in 20, and I would actually say the sooner someone can learn about the the sales skills, right? Okay. And learning how to actually really uh, sell themselves in their knowledge, promote themselves, th because the world is moving into um, 
if you cannot stand out, you don't mm -hmm. know how, that you're you're lost. If you yeah. if you blend in, you bleed out. That's pretty yeah. much it, right? So yeah. what what I would do in my twenty now is the the skill of actually uh, sales, really learning how to talk about myself, making connections. Sales is pretty much building relationships, right? Yes. I would I would say I'd do that really early on. Because okay. throughout the career, throughout your lifetime, you're building relationships. That yeah. is sales. I'd say yeah. start early. Okay. And one last question on the rapid fire is that you are a family man and family is your big value. And uh, I know you have lovely kids. So what is that one big advice you'll give to your kids? So one big advice to my kid is, you know, uh, if you if you believe you can do it, listen to your heart and just go for it. You know, wow. don't don't take validation from anything. If you feel it that, hey, I'm not sure if this is possible. Just go for it. Go for it. Just go for it. And uh, you find your way and keep going. Mm -hmm. If you ask validation from people, you're getting their opinion. Listen to your heart and just go for it. Love beautiful, that. wonderful. <laughs> That's beautiful. And, and, and just taking from there, I, I like this. I like your answers to the rapid fire. That, that's you, you, I'm so glad the the audience <laughs> just love the yeah. love those great answers. And one of the things we like, as you mentioned, you you talked about sales being an opportunity for you to sell yourself, to be able to make connections. And one of the things we like to do on this show is we would like to get as many successful people as possible to come so that they can share their their gems with the people in the community so that we all grow you remember one of the key things they said is success for me means success for you so who would be the three top people you'd want us um coach Shilp and i to interview on this podcast so that they can inspire our community okay great i i think the uh if you look at the category of uh, areas that, you know, I think people will want is if you look mm. at someone that can help someone who's in the, like the, the, the podcast you've got here is career, mm -hmm. career revival and leadership, right? Yes. So if you look at someone who's actually like a C-suite in a, in a, in a company, in a job that can show someone how to grow in their, in their job, right? Mm -hmm. Because before someone transition out of their, their job, they want to grow. So if you can identify a person who's at a C level or actually at a very high profile in a job. I think the the market or your 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 people may love it because mm -hmm. when I had mentors, my mentors were all C suites, right? Exactly. That's how I grew. So if you find someone in that space, that would be great. The second person I think uh, you could actually get is someone who's in a job and currently transitioning into entrepreneur. That middle level will actually give your market a mm -hmm. sense of someone who's who's currently doing it how easy it is how difficult it is so that would be the second person and the third person is really get someone who's actually in in already uh, multiple years in business maybe over 10 years in business so they can see the future that hey 10 years from now how business looks like so if you can identify these three people i think that would be a great start Beautiful. who are the three Beautiful. people you would recommend to us so that we can reach out to them and invite them so in terms of like, uh, if you look at uh, from a career perspective, I think maybe you can look at like you're, you're from a bank, right? You yeah, worked in yeah. a bank before Shilpa. So maybe reach out to some of your old uh, peers that you had at a C level. You you are a president of a bank as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe reach out to some of your peers, identify okay. those people. Okay. Uh, currently transitioning, I think you've got a uh, whole, a lot of people, uh, Gerald, in your community that's transitioning, right? Exactly. And uh, in in entrepreneur, I maybe could give you a few names as well. Yes. Yes. Is so I've got a lot of a lot of peers. You've seen a lot of people that I've actually shared um, online. Uh, people that I've worked with, people that have uh, been been on the show as well with me. Uh, one person comes to mind is there's a friend of mine, Dave. Mm -hmm. Dave Gadvi, yes. you know him. Yeah, bring him in on the show. Yeah. He's amazing, right? Yes. He's been in business for a long time. You bring him in. Yeah. He's a su super awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yes. Yes. So thank you for all your time on this. And I know we are going to continue this discussion. But for this particular episode, 
for career revival and the career growth i'm very glad that you were here and you shared such a beautiful insight and if i have to summarize your key three words is income influence and impact and that you have demonstrated at every step of your life and journey and now you're set to take people on the next journey to build the wealth on command which is a beautiful concept and we'll share all your links and the book uh, uh, you know pre order booking everything in the details of the episode as well so i acknowledge you for being here it's the greatest moment of my life and for dr gerald as well because we look up to you as our uh, best person in our community and the one who supports us at every single stage of life so thank, thank you. you so much and thank you audience for being here please download a special bonus Dev City has created to you so that you start winning from today. Also subscribe, download and share the episode with your colleagues and family and especially the person who's looking for career transition. Join our private leadership and career transition communities and do not hesitate to write to us at leadtalkpodcast at gmail.com. We are here to assist you. so that you achieve your next level in the career in the life in your leadership so by the next time we see you again i want to thank dev on behalf of you and us yes. and see you next time very soon okay. thank you thank you bye. great bye for now thank you bye